Hi everyone, I'm Lorenzo and in this video I'm going to talk about Fast and Furious on the PSP. Fast and Furious is a decent game, but it feels mediocre. In the game we get three types of races, destination races, top speed races and drift. The drift controls are great, because the game seems to be centered around these controls. In top speed races, once you bought the fastest car and installed nitros on it, races are just a waiting game. Nitros gets you to top speed almost instantly. And since there aren't obstacles on your way, you just hit the gas until you're done. But until you get to buy the expensive cars, the car doesn't handle that well. All cars seem to be rear wheeled, and turning them doesn't feel that good. The game also has free roam. But don't get excited, it's of the bad sort. In the game you can drive on highways, and there are exit points on the highway. That's it. That's the free room. Driving in a straight line on a highway. Alone. Because there are no NPC cars. You are alone on the highway. Doesn't sound exciting, right? That's because it isn't. There are several car dealerships and tune shops on the map, but it's so boring to drive along the highway, and that's why most of the game I use the fast travel option. Gladly, the game has that option rather than driving to 8 different car dealerships on an empty highway. As for cars, because the game takes place in Japan, most cars are Japanese. But don't worry, there are also plenty of American cars too. Know why? Because the game has a whopping amount of around 100 cars, which you can also customize from a wealth of options. You can equip your car with body kits, rims, spoilers, finals of many different sort, you have plenty of options there. Visually, I like how the game looks similar to Need for Speed Underground 2, but even if in some moments it reminded me of the game, Fast and Furious is not even close. Not even close to the best racing games on the PSP. The difficulty curve is also annoying. At first you drive such a sluggish car that you wonder why the game is called Fast and Furious. And the more you progress, the more noticeable the difficulty curve gets. Some races are easy, while in others you have no chance against the competition. But luckily you can race the same easy opponents again and again to win cash. And the game kinda forces you to grind the same easy opponents, especially since top speed races are based solely on car stats. There's no skill involved there, you just need to have the fastest car. Also, even if you have 40 different race events, you will feel like you race on the same handful of tracks over and over. This game, with the right budget, could have turned out into a worthy competitor for Midnight Club. But instead, even if it tries to make an effort to not get to that level, it still reaches the tie-in level performance. And you know how movie tie-in games are. Okay, I'm a little bit exaggerating because the game isn't really that bad. But compared to the best racing games on the PSP, it is bad. And it's just too bad, because you can feel the potential of the game. You can feel that someone tried. But it gets overshadowed by the rather mediocre end result of the game. It has so many things that it does good, like the number of cars, the customization menu, and even the graphics to some extent. But the poor controls, empty world, disappointing free roam and repetitive tracks make the game lose a lot. Ok, so this was the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to financially support me in my pursuit to review as many video games as possible, you can do that on Patreon or on the channel's membership section. You will help me a lot. If you want, you can follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord. And if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and terribly thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching.